basic medical and health facilities, but medical services we think could be significantly improved on the islands, especially for the large proportion of chronic illness and disabilities. Islanders have to travel to the mainland for nearly all specialist care and services. We have an older demographic than residents as a whole, but access to services for them, such as in-home or respite care, is limited on island independent living facilities and non-existent. But many would be able to remain in a familiar environment with just a little bit more support than they can get now. Elderly or infirm people have to move away from their island community to access retirement or elderly care accommodation and services, as no independent living facilities exist on the islands. Our ambulance services are excellent, but increasingly stretched. There is a need to rethink the entire approach to medical resources, and especially those for an aging population and for chronic conditions. So the question is, if you were elected, how would you contribute to the improvement of medical services and support for the island's population? Deb, uh, here first off again. Surgery facilities on the island, not with the present 
population, the numbers are too low. Um, I'd be looking, if I, if, if I wanted to have surgery, I'd be looking at, at, at a facility that, that does volume, uh, because that's where you get the best outcome. I used to work in the health industry, so uh, I speak from a bit of experience. So small rural facilities don't have good outcomes, unfortunately. Uh, you'd also uh, probably be at the end of the queue for the type of specialist that, that, that would come in, as you'd expect. Um, I'd be looking to still operate some form of travel subsidy, though, to, uh, to Reading's Hospital. Um, I think certainly the, the current facilities are inadequate, uh, but I think there's opportunities now with uh, e-health. Uh, the, the, to me, I remember three years ago talking about this and saying that the, the MBN should be prioritised to come to places like uh, uh, these islands, because the opportunities for people to work at home are the most great benefit from um, the MBN is the opportunity for consultation to happen remotely with limited facilities at one place and rural and similar opportunity and, uh, and for specialists and full support, x-ray and, and so on and diagnosis uh, and, and, and other imaging uh, opportunities that can happen any, anywhere in the world these days with the, the person remaining in their own local area, their own, their own home environment. And uh, that's been developed now in, into um, mental health, where their mental health consulting is happening via, uh, via the internet and getting good outcomes in, in the studies that have been done. So I think the future probably holds good for that type of, uh, uh, of activity for places like uh, the Morton uh, Bay Islands. Thank you. It's just not for the islands, this is an issue that's throughout Australia. There's um, a very big shortage of aged care facilities. This is also an issue that's close to my heart because my father in law was put into a hospital early November and we've still been unable to get him into a, a nursing home. He has severe dementia. He's starting to forget who we are and I think this is terrible that we have to travel into the city every day to see him and the fact that we cannot get him into anywhere in the wetlands area. I mean, if we're having that problem in there, I mean, imagine with here, you would have to travel to vast areas to go and see your loved ones. So as far as I'm concerned, something does need to be done here. I know that um, some of the nursing, there's lots of private nursing homes but obviously they want anywhere from two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollar deposit as a surety in case they obviously I think it's a damage, but I think obviously they like to pay the interest on it. Um, I find that appalling that we would have to pay that amount of money. But obviously if we had that amount of money, then we would have probably got it into a nursing home a lot quicker. But George doesn't have that and obviously like yourselves, it wouldn't be something that you would be able to do and I think it's very important that uh, that probably the blue nurses or you've got different care like that, those are the ones we would need to talk to with putting the facility on the uh, islands. I mean, the one they have at um, Redland Bay, I think only holds about 50 beds, but obviously it's still somewhere for them to go and, um, yeah, that's obviously something that I would look into and that I'd want to push more, because I think that's important that you have your loved ones near you. When they do have dementia, it is... Um, important that you can uh, continue having that contact with them, obviously until the moment that they don't remember who you are. Uh, with the, the Islands Ambulance Service uh, getting stretched, I, I think it's important that we, uh, we look at getting more uh, paramedics uh, over here. Uh, my, uh, my cousin is a senior paramedic, he works on um, North Stradbroke Island, in fact, used to be in charge of, uh, of the whole region. Uh, I can um, ask him about the the island's needs and, and get some uh, some very precise and uh, experienced information. But uh, the I think the real issue it, it, in the question is dealing with uh, with elderly people and and what we can do to make their lives a little bit easier and maintain um, uh, their uh, lifestyle on the islands. And one of the things that I'd like to, uh, to investigate further is the uh, patient travel subsidy scheme. Uh, 
um, because we, we, have a, we actually have a very good facility at Redlands Hospital and it's getting better and better. And uh, one of the things that, that we, we've done as LNP government over the last two and a half years is actually increase the number of nurses, not decrease them. Uh, they've been increased by over 100 nurses in the Metro South region in the last two and a half years. And we've actually had a record increase in funding in the health budget of, of over 12%. So we've, we've got a great facility there and uh, we've also got some extra money uh, going into residential um, aged care at Redlands Hospital. But the, the patient travel subsidy scheme is a scheme which, um, uh, which pays for travel to and from um, care, uh, medical care and our, our elderly folk on the islands and indeed um, in the Redlands. But uh, specifically for the islands, are uh, often travelling uh, to and from the hospital, often at odd hours, and public transport is uh, is quite difficult for them to manage. And a uh, patient travel subsidy scheme, if we can uh, look at applying it to the islands specifically, will enable funding for uh, for those people to, to go directly to and from hospital to Wynum Creek um, by taxi, and that would be covered for them. So. I think that would be um, certainly a good start and I think there's an opportunity to look at, um, at uh, a facility where elderly can, can go to, um, to live in a, perhaps a TRICARE facility on the islands. There's small TRICARE facilities on the mainland and there's no reason why we couldn't look at um, providing that facility on, on both McLean and Russell.